This video is sponsored by you. Grab our all-in-one bundle and get access to over one and a half terabytes of royalty-free sounds that you can use for your sound design, music, and post-production projects. Use the code F2S5 for $5 off and get our entire library plus future uploads for only $20. Welcome back to another Freedio Sounds video. I'm about to show you how I carry my sound gear while traveling the world full time. Now, before I start and show you everything what is here in my carry-on bag, please keep in mind that Libby and I, we don't have a home base. So every time we buy new equipment, we have to carry this with us. And there are only two options. There's the check-in bag and the carry-on bag. Also, this is not a how-to video. Over the last couple of years, I found a system that works best for me or for us, and we never had any problems when it comes to the security. Now let's talk briefly about the bag. This is the Lova Pro Tactic, the second version, and still I have no complaints about the bag. Still works, still is great. So I transformed the bag that I use when I go out record sounds into my carry-on bag. But when I open it up, you will see that I don't have any dividers anymore because otherwise I would have a little bit of trouble when it comes to spacing and also weight. Now the inside right now, this is how it looks like when I enter the airport. But then in the airport, I readjust the bag because I already know what the security is looking for. And the most important thing is the batteries. So everything else that I'm going to show you isn't something that the security is necessary looks for except the phone. This is my emergency phone that I have always in the bag. So I take this out, it goes into the box, my laptop in here, my computer. These things, these items are outside. That way I really fast by getting things out and also getting things back in. Now when it comes to bags, then we're not only having a carry-on bag or a check-in bag, but we also have a personal item bag. And for me, I transformed this bag now into my personal item bag. And what I carry in here are the microphones or the recording device to record sounds inside an airport. And what I have in here is the DPAs, the Zoom H1N. I also have my phone in here, just in case. And then as a recording device, I have to Zoom F3 in here. The next bag that I would like to show you that I always carry with me is this one here. And this is a waterproof bag or water resistant. And in this, I always carry my SSD and my hard drives with me. Very important bag, always have it on me. And as you can see, I always like to carry things together or having the bags in bags just to keep it more organized. I always know exactly where everything is so over the years, or over the couple of months, you always know exactly where things are. And for me, this is very important because if a security asks me, hey, can you take out this one? I know immediately where it is. It's very important. And in this one, they're the most important items if it comes to the security. And this is actually not the microphones. I think I mentioned it before. It's the batteries. And especially if you carry around power banks, they keep a really close eye on power banks, especially this one, the anchor always outside. So whenever I go to the security, I have this outside right next to the laptop and to the iPhone. If I would carry this just in a bag, 100%, they would take the bag aside and then ask me to open it up. This is the only item that they check. All batteries that I have for all my gear is in this one. So that's where I carry everything like the big block battery for the Loam Electro Mini or for the Zoom F3, for the Zoom F6. All the batteries are in here. I also never carry the batteries in the recording device. I always take them out before I go to the security. So this one, the batteries that are in here, before I go to the security, I put them in here. What about microphones? Do I carry microphones with me in a carry-on bag or in a check-in bag? And that really depends on the microphone. I don't have too much room in here, so I keep microphones that I'm going to show you later inside the check bag. But here, what I carry with me are the most expensive microphones. And these are the Schweppes microphones and also the Sennheiser microphones. I have in these containers, I have the two Sennheiser microphones. I actually made a short about it. And what's so cool about this is they're not only fitting perfectly in here, we already have silica beads in here and they still smell really nice. 
the Shep's microphone. I have them in this Audio Technica case. It's a really good case. I used to have it for earbuds, but I don't have the earbuds anymore. But I really like this case, so I kept it. I always make sure there's a silica pad in here, and all the three microphones are here in this bag. And that's how I carry them. Never had any issues. What about recording devices? As you already know, I have the Zoom F3 with me that is in my personal item bag together with the Zoom H1n. But I do carry another recording device with me and this is the Sound Devices Mix Pre 6, which I carry here in this bag. Now, if you're wondering, does the security look for it? No, they never did. Also, when I have it, I never have batteries in here. They're only checking the power banks. They haven't checked any of my recording devices. The next item that I always carry with me is my tech organizer. Here we have cables, SD card, and also the charger for the MacBook. And the last item that I like to show you here in my carry-on bag before we head over to the checking bag is the Rykord Cyclone. I always carry this one with me. I make sure that there are no microphones in here because I remember when I took the flight from the US to Spain they actually looked at it because I had the microphones in so since then I don't keep the microphones within I always keep it in the hard case and then I don't have problem also this part here I always make sure that this is unlocked so that it can move around freely just in case of when things happen and also we have the wind chamber in here now let's talk about the check-in bag and here in front of me that's my new luggage I just bought it in Busan it's an American tourist store and it's a hard shell but it's a very light one so I always have to make sure that the luggage that I buy is light that's why we don't carry pelican cases with us because they're pretty heavy but also they grab a little bit more attention and we just don't want to have too much attention wherever we go with our gear or with our equipment in general so the separation is very very simple I have two and here's all my clothing in this part and here's all my gear except the Manfrotto Nanopole. And the reason why I do this is first off I know exactly where everything is. So whenever we go to a new place I know when I open it up this stuff is what I need right now. The clothing goes in the closet. It makes just my life easier but also for security reason or custom reasons if they want to see things then you open it up and everything looks organized. It's just better instead of having everything just everywhere. So now let's open it up and I show you what is here inside my gear compartment. Okay, so let's just start with this bag. Maybe if you followed me around the Camino Frances, then you know this was the bag that I had in my backpack to keep my computer in it. But right now in this bag is my keyboard. The Novation, you know, when I do a little bit of sound design, then this is always in here with the cable and it goes here onto this side. Always depends on the trip, how long it is. But uh, if it's a short trip, then this headphone here from Shure is also in this compartment. Then we have for the road microphone, the wind protection. I always make sure that this is not together. So I always keep it open just for the purpose of not having it broken. Now, what is this here? This is a yoga block. Yoga blocks are very light and they're great if you want to have a separation. And sometimes how we travel, you know, with all the things that we have, we give these things a second purpose. So wherever we are, we're using the yoga block as a yoga block. And then when we travel, we're using it as a separation. It's the same with the jump road. You know, we have a jump road that we're using for jumping. But then sometimes when you go to a place and there is no a laundry line, then we can use this as a laundry line. Loam geophone, contact microphone, all in this bag will always be here in this side. This here, Libby, she bought a new lens, but we still have the lens, but Libby keeps the lens in her bag because she also has a check-in bag and a carry-on bag. And uh, I use this one to carry the task cam then the wind protection and the small microphones and then also the Zoom F6. And it's great because this lens bag here fits both items perfectly. So this is, this is wonderful. Now what's in this one? This bag, this is where I carry my DPAs and also 
the connector for the DPAs. And you get these actually when you buy DPA microphones. But then I also carry the Rode NTSF1 ambisonic microphone here inside. So I don't have this in my carry-on bag. I always check this piece of gear. And I never had any problems. If you have it in a case like this, and then it's also nicely uh, organized, there is no problem with having it squished, but you, know, you never know. The only reason that people might be worried is if the bag gets lost. But do I have an insurance for my gear? Yes, I do have an insurance. So all the sound gear that I'm using is insured, just in case if something happens. Then what else do I have here? This is the Loam Electrolush, Electro Slush Mini City. And uh, I would not want to have this in my carry-on bag. I think people would look at it. They want to see what that is, especially if you would carry it with the battery. So I don't do this. This, no problems. Put it in my check bag. Also, I make sure that nothing flies around, like little items. Uh, this one right now, this is also for the road, as you can see. As I mentioned before, I always make sure that this is loose. This is to have the Rode microphone and then this, right? We have all this here in the check bag. Okay, so what's in here? Ah, yeah, yeah. So this is the bag for the sound devices. I always put this in an extra bag and then there it is. This is also in a very interesting bag because in here we carry the wind protection for the road. But I also have the hydrophone in here. This is the same, um, the hydrophone is quite heavy and I don't want to have this in my carry-on bag. Because I remember I also had um, the security look at it and just to avoid this all the time, just have it in your check bag or I have it in my check bag and then I never had any problems. And it's very well secured in here. And then again, with all the separations that I do with the yoga blog, always comes out perfectly without any problems. Then what else do we have in here? You probably remember one of our latest video about the sound devices, creating a portable recording device with it using the Sennheisers. That's where I keep the bubble bees too. And these are also very nice um, kind of buffers, you know, when you have them in here. Sometimes you just move stuff around and then you think, hey, second purpose, not just wind protection, but I can also use it as a buffer. Of course, there is the ASF2 hydrophone, what I also carry here inside. There's also a very long cable, so I don't want to have any kind of long cables in the carry-on bag. And this is also very important to have because what happens if a security staff scans the bag and then he finds this hydrophone and doesn't really know what it is. So I always keep the user manual and what it is right next to it so that they can look at it. And then they know, oh, okay, it's a hydrophone. Some people know what it is, some people might don't. And then they Google, what is a hydrophone? Oh, you can record underwater sounds. It's fine, put it back in, tuck. Sometimes that really helps if you have a user manual always with a gear that some people might have no idea what it is. I already mentioned it. This is where the Sinella is. Yes, I carry the Sinella here in my check-in bag. The wind protection is also in here. I can easily fit this in here and then, boop. This, always loose, no problems. Since we bought it in Paris, we probably had at least 15 or 20 flights and it was always in here. So no problems, nothing broke yet. Knock on wood, that this won't happen. Okay, now the last bag also here, you see, I have a bunch of um, silica pads in here. So what do we have in here? Some of you probably already know it, the cable for the hydrophone and also an extra cable for the DMS kit. So this is what we have here. This is the long one for the ASF1 hydrophone. And then what do we have in here? Let's see, cables for the VR microphone that I keep in here. Boop. The microphone for the ORTF is in here. The DMS cables are in here. 
that's the thing about the ambient. It's so great. And that's why I don't carry it in my carry-on bag because I know if I would lose these kind of cables as one call for ambient and say, hey, I you lost the cables or something happened and they can make it and they can ship it worldwide and it will be in my possession in less than two weeks, which is an amazing service. So that's why I'm not really worried about losing cables, but losing something like the the um, Rycord, the, the, the DMS, or one of these microphones, that's a, that's a different story. It's very hard to get this. We hope you enjoyed this video. And if you're one of the viewers who were always wondering how does Marcel and Libby pack their audio gear, then I hope you found this video helpful, but it is not a how-to video. And if you're wondering, but what about kilo weight? How much weight is this? Is it okay to be under 23 kilo? With this, what I just showed you, it is very challenging to be under 23 kilo, but we always make it work. And sometimes airlines provide you 30 kilos and then, then it's absolutely not a problem. But it doesn't mean that this is something that I would recommend. Absolutely not. This is just what happened to us over the years by purchasing gear in different countries and always going to new places so whenever we go back to the United States and we have a storage room or we have the possibility to sell gear what you just saw then we definitely do this so that we have a smaller kit to go to new places so I really hope you enjoyed this video and I can't wait to see you in our next one